You're listening to Pardon the Disruption with your host, Tom Young. Hey, everybody. Hey, welcome to the show. This is Tom Young. Let's go around the room. This is Bart Gallo. This is TJ Young. And this is Rohan Kapoor. Hey, thanks, guys. Hey, today we're going to talk about uh, some technology disruption in the field of education. Yes, indeed. Uh, lots of changes happening in the way education delivery is happening, but also the need for education because technology is becoming such a big part of our economy and the way we live today. It requires a lot of people to go back to school, to be retrained, to, to be exposed to things and not think of education as a once and done you do when you're young. That it's something you do out throughout your life. So again, let's talk a little bit about that. Rohan, why don't you yeah. kick us off with some things to talk about here? Yeah, definitely. So. Um, I think uh, the the growth of some of these um, companies offering offering what they call uh, an acronym, which is MOOCs, which is massive open online courses, has grown considerably. So people will probably be familiar with Coursera. Um, they have. Um, I'm not familiar with it. Okay, so it's it. They offer a range of online courses. They have a few different entry mm -hmm. points as far as subscriptions are concerned. So you can go in and you can audit classes for free decide which ones you want to do and then pay for them. Um, they also have an online when degree. When I pay, what do I get? So you'll get um, you'll get a whole block of learning from, they partner up with a lot of universities. So you'll get, uh, you get the curriculum online, you get all of the materials online that you need for the course, you get video teachings from tutors, you get online challenges and problems that you have to solve, coursework. Some have actual certifications, degrees, online yeah. degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are generally the paid ones. Um, or you can also have this, they've got a subscription service where you pay an average of fifty dollars a month for all of that, including the certificate. It seems, so, so. My view is, if you're interested in a subject, you can almost always just go on, you know, start Google searching it and reading. Mm -hmm. I like to start with Wikipedia and then branch out from there and see, right. what, you know, because that's typically Wikipedia pages are curated, mm -hmm. and uh, you can learn a lot just by just reading. It's not like uh, if you want to study something. I think there's a world in our economy today where you can be certified. But I think, as I think about classic college education credits, they're becoming, they seem to me, less valuable. No, I think the, the MOOC concept, what it brings in, because I think um, not everyone's able to read so something from Wikipedia and fully ingest it and work it into their knowledge base. So I think uh, what these MOOCs are bringing in are elements of a traditional university and digitizing those, the element of community and support services and like office hours and digitizing that in the form of forums and conversations so, online through so these MOOC platforms. So MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. Now, did you guys know that before we started talking about this topic? No, no. I heard Rohan say it and I started using it. Did you know it beforehand? I, I did know it, but that's only because I've bumped into a few people who have used it uh, as an acronym. That's uh, the first time I'm seeing it. I like it, though. Yeah. So it's quite popular. And these, Because um, I agree, it actually gets down to the fundamental question of of uh, how people learn. It does offer them a lot of flexibility. It's very, very popular. Um, Coursera is doing about $140 million in revenue. Um, Uda City is valued at over a billion dollars as of 2015. And so Khan Academies, that's mostly, it's more like YouTube based than more of these structured content on Coursera, Yeah, I think. And a lot of these are actually, uh, they're free to actually go and try. So it's kind of, it, like Bart said, they're digitizing the online courses, condensing it in a lot of cases down to like a five or six week program for some of them. Um, and then, um, but it's not, but you're still, it, it's just added knowledge on top of a lot of people who have graduated, like you say, who want to still build on jobs that they feel they might need where their employers aren't really retraining them. They are having to retrain themselves. They find these kind of environments really good. Um, but it's still, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting to see. We've got some charts of the, uh, just how big the gap is between the investment that's going into education, especially education technology, versus the size of the actual market. And I think it's going to have to change because the way, the nature of jobs is changing. So you sent out a, um, uh, a link to, a, power, a presentation that I looked at, yeah, and it was projecting this company called Hold On IQ mm -hmm. was estimating that the global education market that's sitting right now around five point nine trillion, yeah, 
would in next 12 years almost double to 10 trillion which is a significant increase yeah so, and so the issue to me is anytime you're dealing with those kind of numbers we have a lot of institutions that uh, make up the current composition of education whether that be corporate education but I'm thinking more the higher education like the university system mm-hmm and you know we we had talked about it on prior shows about the nature the, the how expensive it is to go to college today compared to what it was 25 or 30 years ago uh, people are graduating with massive amounts of debt and to me i i am in the, as a professional in the industry that requires a lot of education to do what we do i'm not even saying formal education i'm questioning the value of a lot of these college credits that come out in terms of their relevance in terms of economic relevance in the economy moving forward. And I think education is important, but the way that it's structured or has been structured is just outdated. So the question is, I think we can agree there, but the question is, what is going to be the force to disrupt this? And my, in my opinion is, I don't think, I think Coursera's, Udacity's, um, uh, Khan Skillshare, Academy, Skillshare Ca- the Khan Academies, they'll chip away at it, but I think in my opinion, I think the private sector will have to come yep. up and say, we value these degrees. We value undergrad degrees in particular, as opposed to specialized postgraduate degrees, uh, much less than we did before. Yeah. Like, so you hear about some of these, especially in the tech world, companies not really requiring for your degrees anymore. Yeah. Uh, Google, Apple, IBM, um, uh, even some of the consultancies. Ernst, like and Ernst, Young. Ernst and Young doesn't require it anymore. I mean, I'm sure it helps, but they don't require it mm-hmm. on their job op- applications. A lot in the uh, retail space, Whole Foods, Costco, um, Hospitality, Hilton. But this could be back office too. Home Depot, Chipotle, the Bank of America, even the banking sector. It's happening across the sectors. I think tech mostly, but across the entire industry or the entire marketplace in America at least. I think... But Once the, more companies join the bandwagon, it'll really take off. I think yeah. it, it has to do with also, you know, a recognition that the 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 college education that defined sort of the, I'll call it the 20th century, you know, because few people went to college at the beginning of the century, and then as we exited the 20th century, it was, you know, assumed that all productive people would graduate high school and then go to college, right? It was a majority from a, a minority to majority, and that pivot. We expanded different college majors and things like that. But as we move into this digital and post-digital economy, you know, we went and we visited, uh, you know, we went with one of our clients, TJ and I went, and we went to Rutgers. And we and we visited, I, w- I used to, uh, when I was in graduate school there, I taught a couple classes and I was very familiar with some of the, the college professors. And I went and with uh, one of the deans of the engineering school and we talked about, the relevance of even advanced education from good schools like Rutgers about how relevant it was to the current marketplace. I, and, and what I said, you know, I didn't mean it to be uh, overly divisive, but I was saying I don't believe that the school is doing the best job they can to prepare people for what is required to work in the advanced technologies, especially the digital economies today. Yeah. So things like data science was a big area that the schools at some level are addressing today but the curriculum is not keeping up with the pace of change in the economy. Yeah, I definitely agree. I also think, though... By the way, Rohan, yeah. I, I thought I would get some level of hostility. And as we met with the the a the, uh, couple of the professors and the guy who was in charge of one of the, on the committees of curriculum at the engineering school, he I knew him from 30 years ago. He agreed with me. He goes, yeah. we cannot do this. And this is why I thought you have to create sort of an augmentation and have the businesses come in and tell people what is relevant today. Almost like trade schools where you're learning the new digital trades. Yeah. You know, and these I, online courses really lend themselves to doing that. So, And it goes back to what my philosophy always been is if you opt into this, there's a, a tremendous amount of resources, that, everything from free mm-hmm. to formal programs and everything in between. You yeah. can get an online MBA for um, just under thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I also think though. So, is it a good deal? <clears throat> it, again, it's ha- it's not valued by whether it's valued by the employer. Well, it's, it's, who who puts their stamp of approval on it? Yeah. So, where does the thirty thousand come from? University of Phoenix. Let me see. 
So you can look that up. I think up, the lowest was like 20 something. Let me just look up a couple of figures. Yeah. But the, the uh, my issue is, is it, is it, uh, is it worth it? Because there's two costs. The one that's the tuition cost is this piece of it. Your opportunity cost is another one. So when I go to college and I pay, I was talking to somebody. They said the, the uh, as, we were. Oh, I was speaking yeah. to Carnegie Mellon last week. Oh. I was talking to one of the deans there. School seventy five thousand. Yeah, that's so seventy five times four. You're into three hundred thousand dollars for school. Now you're also in the the deferment of four years of income. So now I'm into. Let's just call it a half a million dollars. So I'm in a half a million dollar hole at 21, if I include opportunity cost. With interest compounding, let's just say the interest is uh, 5%. five percent. Yeah, that's low, but it's probably more than that. But that's still 25. So, and then there's a twenty-five thousand dollar headwind that I have to get to just to get just to get to the point where I can touch the principal. So I'm going to go make a job making. Out of school, let's just say you get lucky and you get a hundred and twenty thousand dollar job out of school. Is that a starting salary coming out of school today, or is that high? No, that's high. Okay. Extremely high. Yeah. All right. How about ninety? No, that's Extreme, also high. It's extremely high. It's like sixty probably okay. in New York. All right. I'm no. just, so we're doing about. Let's just call it seventy five. I went to this really good school, and I'm a half a million in the hole, right? Seventy five thousand dollars starting out, and I got twenty five thousand as my first nut to pay the interest. Yeah, and you're earning. That's assuming I borrowed all the money. And you're earning pre tax, right? I didn't. I either borrowed the money; it was given to me. So, so now I have to pay that seventy five thousand is my income. I have to live too. Tax. I got taxes. So say say I on that seventy five, I take home fifty five. Mm -hmm. Pay twenty in taxes. Fair. That's probably uh, that's probably reasonable. So I got fifty five. If I'm going to pay off that interest, that fifty five now becomes less twenty five. I'm down to thirty, and I'm and I'm making less than I would have made when I came out of high school, probably. And and so and then and so unless you rapidly move into making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year, and the only route that you're able to do that is through this schooling. Then the business case for this college degree, hypothetically, that's three hundred grand you borrowed all the money for, is not a good business case. Now, I know academics are going to come to me, and, and I talked to one of the deans at Carnegie Mellon about this when we were out there, and I, I did get some hostility. You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the cocktail hour? Yeah. I wasn't. Again, I wasn't trying. I was just trying to be provocative, and I said, "And you guys know this is the work that I've been trying to do here with the community college here at." in Somerset County at Raritan Valley Community College is talking about this reimagining education to not just a four-year degree once and done, now I'm done educated. It's the two-year degree at a community college plus two years of apprenticeship. The apprenticeship underwrites the two years. You come out with relevant skill sets and you're making a lot more money. Your, your starting salaries, in this case, are over $100,000. Yeah, at twenty one, where they wouldn't be if you went to a four year school, and you have no debt, so you start off on a good foot, and and your education continues from that. It's a it's a lifestyle, and it's an attitude, but I think the pe people are going to start running the numbers on these on these college degrees and really starting to question them. And if you can afford it and you're wealthy, then knock yourself out. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. I also think with college with with regards to college degree. Uh, this is maybe one area where technology can actually disrupt some, some, some of the stuff and where I think Coursera and these MOOCs don't really offer true disruption, but they're just one step in the process is basically like everyone also, like how people learn is also very different and very personal. Like my pace of learning and my, um, what I find relevant to help me understand the subject is completely different to any of you guys. So for example, you know, when I'm learning statistics or you're learning statistics, maybe like linking that to baseball might be uh, relevant for you. Whereas for me, I would prefer something else. So I think when technology gets to the level of personalization where you can actually adapt, you know, not only the pace of learning, but exactly how people come to the same objective, that's when I think you're going to see real, because that's getting to the core of the problem is like not only what are people learning, which is dated, but also 
how are they actually learning and how yeah. are they going to well, I, I look I look back at my, in my time I have a, a a bachelor's and a master's degree in engineering and I remember when I was in school you know we would go and have to take these classes you know like advanced physics or things like that just to get just to get through it and oftentimes you know the professor's just not into teaching 18 year olds advanced <laughs> physics and you know uh and some of the professors were terrible they yeah. weren't very good they didn't and they didn't and by the way they didn't really even care they just threw it up on a whiteboard they did their stuff walked in and out and uh in my physics class and there was i'm going to say a thousand people in the class and it was in over the course of four or five sections so it's the same class but we some people would have different times where they would be in the lecture hall and they'd use two or three professors and they would use the same curriculum i was assigned to this one professor who was just terrible he was and uh you could not you could easily get a seat but then there was this guy uh this indian guy i forgot what his name was but he was you had to get there a half hour early to get a seat wow it was packed people sitting in the aisles everywhere and at the end of the semester you got a standing ovation wow so he he made the class interesting he explained it in a way where he cared and people actually learned versus the people went in the other section they went to the class and they had to then go back to their dorm and study themselves and teach it themselves. Yeah. And so when we look at the digital technologies today, when we're studying different topics and we study stuff all the time, yeah. one of the th things we'll look at is something like a Kurskazakit video. Yeah. Right? Which I which to me is the digital version of that cool Indian professor from Rutgers 30 years ago when I was there who made it interesting, who brought it down to a level we could understand. The Kurskazakit videos do that in the, in the topics that they cover. Yeah, and I think that education is ripe for reinvention using this technology, the digital technologies, to help people understand and learn these complex subjects. Yeah, you do sacrifice a little bit of the potential interaction if you're a student who wants a little bit of back and forth or participation. It is a little bit dissociated. Yeah, just from what I've experienced participating in some of these certifications, it seems like tech has been focused on improving accessibility to content and improving flexibility in terms of pace of learning and just yeah. access to that content. But I don't think it's done enough to promote the social connections and the dynamic interactions that take place, that could take place, not all the time, as you said, in a face-to-face -face interaction, right? It's, it's less rich, but again, you're trading that for accessibility, ease of access, and so on and so forth. I think it's just like an evolution of what we see in the enterprise now with a lot of technology again we often say a lot of the especially automation technologies are designed so that they can take away the mundane so that the people left can focus on the higher value adds and I, the same should be true for education as well with teaching whereby you know the 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 teachers step in to have that emotional interaction with the kids and actually they can start to think about what is truly important in the role of a teacher and what is just not really adding much value and where can technology kind of take that over. Um, and certainly from the graphs we saw, like the, no one's really investing. The government the government funded education portion is, uh, they're struggling to keep, keep pace even just on the operating it day to day and the private sector, like you said, has to step in, but they're not currently investing. So uh, there's, it, it's, a, I think it's super interesting um, well, TJ and Bart, Bart, you guys went through a recent certification for Automation Anywhere. We just signed up for, uh, yeah, for Automation Anywhere we have. Yeah, you, you completed years ago. that. So yes. tell us about that. How, Bart, how was that when you did that? Did you do it by yourself? or? Well, the, the contrast I would talk about in terms of um, the Automation Anywhere training versus some of the traditional um, academic paths we're talking about are, um, this was something that was uh, a tool that we were actively applying in a business environment and there was a clear sort of connection between um, the tool and the skill we were learning and how it would play out into um, mm -hmm. the workforce that we were a part of at the time, the client we were working with. And I think um, our, our, some of the points we're talking about with how uh, the academic um, traditional coursework can't keep with the pace of business is that connection is unclear and I think it's kind of daunting to ask 18 and 19 year old people to make that connection and have it play out in a way that makes sense for them. 
Yeah, so if I were to distill a little bit of what you just said, that there was an experiential aspect to the learning. Yes, it was right. a- so active It was also tool-specific Yeah, versus right. something that's more general and ethereal. I hear, I hear a lot from, like, say, an 18-year-old, mm-hmm. you know, someone that's, you know, talk to students, why am I learning calculus? <laughs> Why am I learning yeah. calculus for? <laughs> to teach calculus yeah. to future college students <laughs> who aren't going to know how they're learning calculus. It, 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 uh, it, it, it has minor applications, but it's important to have some understanding of calculus uh, in the business world, but not mm-hmm. as much as they teach you. Yeah, It's an approach to problem solving. Whereas I think, I think a lot of these business certs you know, for their experiential are much more hands-on. This is where I go back to the notion of modern-day apprenticeships. You're learning stuff because you need to to get the work done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think <coughs> apart from the hostility you felt at the cocktail hour yeah. at Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon, uh, when it wasn't that bad. It was just like, I'm, it was like I made an off-color joke. <laughs> it was. It wasn't. So it wasn't overt hostility, sure. like, which could have also been the case. We don't like your facts <laughs> here, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but they. I think that most most other people. Who, you've spoken to in the education sector seem to be very aware of this problem certainly the person at raritan um oh for sure yeah was very I, acutely um, aware of this yeah i mean you have to f- find people who are or who, aren't, who aren't necessarily invested in the in the answer mm-hmm. so yeah who are more interested in the in the abstract I'm, I'm concerned about it from a public policy perspective i see people coming out of uh, college with an immense amount of student debt. You cannot get rid of this debt through bankruptcy. I think from a public policy perspective, it makes it very hard to make that debt go away because so many people struggle to pay it off that that's not fair to them. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of these schools that are sitting on large endowments, you cannot have that situation where you have so many students that went through those institutions now. So I think we really have to address the cost of education. And I think what's going to happen, they're going to have to they're going to be forced to fix this. TJ rattled off a bunch of companies who don't require a college degree. Certainly it's a value add, but it's not a requirement whereas that wasn't true 20 years ago. Yeah. You also don't want to downplay the role of universities. I think I think we're, what we're focusing on and criticizing is the four-year degree, and the just the absurd tuition costs that go into that. Um, but I think there's also as we move That's into the future point. and approach yeah. appro- approach digital. Digital doesn't mean it, we're focusing more on modernizing these programs. The institutions can pivot. The, it's just the programs that need well, to right. modernize. And, and, and we're focusing more and more and more of what's important is we talk about a lot is the experience economy, which is a different podcast we do. But I think the the location of the campus, um, kids being going on campus, getting away from their comfort zone, from their home, mm-hmm. right, and then kind of go, jumping into a new world is. I think a lot of that sets the foundation for the psyche to say, I'm going to learn, I'm going to try new things, mm-hmm. make new friends, make a network. Yeah, I think a lot of that's harder to do if you're if we're just talking about online. So I think we're yeah. talking about digital, but we're also talking more about can we just reshape these programs and. <laughs> maybe introduce new economic structures and incentives. Yeah. Right. So it makes sense to go to college and it's not something that's just a relic yeah. from the past. So I, I think yeah. we are conflating a lot of different issues here in that sense. So right. there is the there is how do we use digital to to uh, reinvent and, and upgrade and improve the delivery of education. I also think there's a another issue around the the validity of old style university education in terms of its continuing relevance in an overly digitized world where people major in things that are uh, not as relevant as they should be given their cost. So if I, even if I look at an engineering degree, highly relevant in today's society, but even that is falls short of being able to walk in and start contributing right away. If you major in, you know, we use the, the, the joke major Hungarian poetry, uh, I, I have there's very, very little I can do with that degree it, that that makes that degree worth the money that I paid for it. And then the last thing is, I think that the, another issue is, I don't want to conflate all these, I want to separate them. The last one is that education is a something you do once and done, that you go to school, you're done learning, and then you go work. And I think all of these trends are happening, are going to start to change the nature of this, so that you do go, instead of going to a four-year school, maybe you go to a two-year school to break your 
you know, dependence of living at home with your parents and things like that and go independent and then go into these apprenticeship programs, but continue to learn uh, more relevant things. I, I just think that that four year degree, the way it goes today is not no longer as relevant as it could be. And I think the delivery technologies can change what that degree is, how it's delivered, and then also change the nature of the length of when we're educated. I think you should always be learning. You should always be studying. So the question I want to ask you guys, and I'm kind of torn here. I don't really know where this is going to go. I think we we're kind of implying in some ways and anecdotes that maybe more of what's relevant will be more specific, targeted apprenticeship apprenticeship type programs where we're learning skills that are immediately applicable mm -hmm. and uh, much more attractive to those willing to hire students versus more of the generalist, I know a little bit of everything, jack of all trades that you kind of get from early years of schooling, like freshman, sophomore year. Do we see it moving to more of those specialized skills? And if so, how does that equate or how does that um, uh, jive with the whole idea of, well, specializations for insects in the future, specialization will be done by machines. We should be people that have many skills so we're more well-rounded. You know, there's a yeah. bit of a dichotomy I, there. I think to the point of increasing specialization, but also um, the point of constantly learning, I think we talk about the idea of pixelization a lot, mm -hmm. where you see pixelization in something like work, where you see like crowdsourcing platforms, mm -hmm. and then you also see pixelization and say IT infrastructure with things like Docker and Kubernetes. I think what we're seeing with these online courses and things like Coursera is the pixelization of learning in some ways where you have a specific need for maybe not a short term project, but um, something you're working on where it's very clear, the specific highly skilled new abilities that you need and you can go and dive into that for three weeks, three months versus um, shackling yourself to something that's four years and um, you know, six figures in cost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the term polymath, right. Is somebody's good at multiple things, right. Versus subject matter expert, deep versus and, a, deep and narrow, a deep, yeah. a, a deep, narrow expert. I, I, I think, I mean, if you had the choice, I would certainly think a polymath is much better and going to be much more successful in our society today, largely because, you know, a term we've used in, in some of our consulting around innovation is the, con the notion of recombinant innovation, where I recombine different things to create new and interesting uh, outcomes. So if I'm in biology and I, and I study machine learning AI, is how do I, br no, maybe I can combine those two things and create new things around, you know, biological platforms. It could be DNA editing. It could be a whole bunch of things around that. But the ability to know three, four, five things so that you can start to see how they come together as different industries and technologies converge. I, I, I think it's uh, I think you're probably got to start out becoming an expert at one thing and then branch out. And uh, what was the phrase we came up with? Uh, it's not one of the two. It's uh, jack of all trades, master of one. Yeah. Instead of master of none. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's right. That's probably a good phrase. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the one, the whole idea we talked about before about Automation Anywhere or the final senior year apprenticeship program that's very specific and maybe even company specific, IBM sponsoring a program at the local community college and I want you to learn these things because we need a new workforce, new hires, young hires and you need to do this project. That's a Kickstarter. It's very specific but it's a Kickstarter and then you get what's better than a degree is actual experience at a big company and then from there branch out. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the master of one but you want to train to be a polymath as well before that. Right, because that's what will make you unique in that environment that you're yeah. about to enter. But I, I look at the, you know, um, the, the tools that are out there today. Like uh, when you go to college today, it's it, there's a lot of digital platforms that make learning easier. You know, when I go back to when I was in school, you had physical paper, you had study guides, you had to take notes. Uh, you didn't have the we didn't have the internet back then in the 1980s, so it was it was a lot of analog. You had to buy textbooks, like big fat textbooks, and 
they were a lot cheaper, I, right? I slept. No, they were. Yeah. They were still like they were. They were still. It's that's a whole textbook's a whole different scam, but. Uh, no, the, the 14th edition has some very clear advantages <laughs> to the 13th edition. Yeah. And if you buy the 13th edition, you fail yeah. automatically. Why a calculus book is not four dollars as uh, b- beyond me? But There's just, a lot of that obvious corruption. That's just like low hanging fruit. Right? Yeah, yeah, you don't need yeah. digital to figure that out. Yeah, they, like, like to shed a light on the cockroaches. This book has the <laughs> same name on it of the but, person who I'm listening to. Think of going in with an iPad Pro that's fully wired and jacked. You can take notes on it, physical notes. You want to do it old school, or records and translate. But as as you can record what's happening, have it transcribed. Mm -hmm. All your notes are taken for you. Yeah, Uh, class notes are available online, so you can really focus on the actual learning. And you can uh, go to a lecture, grab a couple keywords, and then go study those words very quickly. You know, again, we do that all the time in our in our business. So we hear a word we don't understand, we look it up. Um, Oh, I get it now. my knowledge has expanded very quickly because it was relevant to my situation and I had the ability to use it. So one of the phrases I used uh, in, when we were talking about this and around the experience stuff is, think of the, and this has to do with data science as well, with uh, cognitive ontologies. To be told is not to know. And that knowing, real knowledge, requires experience. <clears throat> so in data science, if I take two ontologies which is uh, I ingest all the rules of baseball into an, uh, in an ontological framework, and I take all the rules of football into an ontological framework, and I technically join them together. The platform will not know without merging these two data and mixing them up, which is an experiential uh, aspect to it, what are the rules that are similar and what are the ones that are different? Like what can you distill between football and baseball that are the same? In order to do that, you just can't join these things. They have to come together. They have to, they have to go through a, a mixing and mashing in the way in the data science would work. Well, that, in the in the real world, that turns into experience. I have to know this. So imagine we did a road trip where we looked at we went to all fifty states and visited all state fifty state capitals, and we took the whole summer to do it. And the four of us got in the car and we had a great time. At the end of that, we would know the fifty state capitals versus have them memorized. Hmm. And you think about that through education, that's why the apprenticeship programs, I think, are lend themselves to uh, a much better, richer, robust experience set. And it also serves the business needs and the business community needs and solves a broader social issue about the cost of education. Hmm. Right? Because I, I, I don't believe we're in a sustainable mode right now. We see it in the presidential politics right now where a lot of the presidential candidates are talking about student debt and the cost of uh, education. Some people want it to be free. Some people want to waive student debt. You know, I I, I think that's they're throwing, uh, they're just putting out lines for political. Yeah. Uh, hey, but you know, you really have to think of this from a public policy perspective. Education is critical for our society to be successful. And but but I don't believe more of the old is what the doctor ordered here. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. So you. TJ, you mentioned you and Bart signed up for another course. Yeah, so uh, we recently just started looking at Coursera. Um, in so you know, big focus area, at least in business for us, is on automation, AI, and the like. So we just signed up for a um, machine learning course, kind of an intro to machine learning course that's sponsored by Stanford, run through Coursera. Yep. Uh, Twelve week, so about a three month program uh looking at the hours that the videos consist of in the reading and it's the like test it's three a, four credit class like a three, four, yeah. taking one college one, one class. classic college it's yeah. what it equates to pretty much in terms of time uh and at the end they give you a certification from stanford yep. f- uh, for machine learning how much general 80 bucks wow yep so if you were to buy those three credits at a college you might pay <clears throat> four digits a thousand dollars I don't know if you could even buy three credits. Yeah. You roll into a program. That's the other thing. You, get, you, can yeah. do you have to shackle credits. yourself to their whole institution. It's 80 bucks. And, uh, yeah. and so uh, and you're going to put in and just to 200 you... hours? No. I don't think so. I mean, how much time is there? I'm, I'm just guessing. Well, gonna... it's about an hour per week per credit, I think, is a good uh, rough a Plus study point. time and... I was going um, three, three. Okay, so uh, few hours. 70, it's a few hours a week, yeah. just like watching it's, the videos. So and seventy-five yeah. hours total. 
I'd say it's probably three, four, including uh, the examinations. I'm just you trying have to, to get a sense I think of it's like uh, it's got six hours a week, maybe five hours a week times it's, times twelve. Yeah, okay. 50, no, now I'm remembering you know I mean? the, the guide point I was thinking of. It's twelve, like so twelve credits in in college is like you're in the classroom for twelve hours. Yeah, but then a there's week. the yeah, yeah. There's so. a ratio there. So mm-hmm. if if I do so. Uh, the three credits. That's three cre- That's three hours of classroom time mm-hmm. per week. Reading and videos. It's also in the this studying case. and the, the reading. Yeah. So let, let's call it ten hours a week. For how long? Twelve weeks. So you got hundred. Let's call it call hundred it, hours. Let's call it hundred hours. Yeah. It's because you can hit fast forward on a lot of this. So so hundred hours and it's eighty bucks. Mm-hmm. So it's eighty cents an hour. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was. I wanted to go through this math because I think it's important to go yeah. through it. And. Uh, if I look at the expensive college degree, you know, when I say, okay, uh, you know, in the, in the most extreme, it's say $300,000 for an expensive private education at the top school. And I, and I look at that and I divide that by, uh, 8,000 hours, which is full time for four years. That's include, that's full time year round. So let, let's just knock that number down, down a bit, yeah. to 1,500. So I'm going to say 6,000 hours mm-hmm. divided by 6,000 hours across my, my school. That's 50 bucks an hour you're paying to be in college. Probably wow. more in a lot of cases, depending on the school. So I'm paying 50 bucks an hour for my education. And that includes study, all my study time and classroom time compared to what you guys are doing is 80 cents. Yeah, that was... And, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because this yeah. is the power of digital. It's exponential. Yeah. It's exponential. And it, what this course offers you, it, 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 let's just say it costs $50 an hour to be part of Stanford's. Now you're going to be part of Stanford for $0.80 cents an hour. Yeah. But we, we also don't have access to Silicon Valley. I mean, it would be different if we were near there, but we... So the guy teaching this program, just to give you an idea of who this guy is, is Andrew. Yeah, Lee, that's a good point. Who is, um, the founder. He, was the co- he co-founded Google Brain, and he was a former <laughs> vice president and chief scientist at Baidu, I, and <laughs> while also being an adjunct professor at Stanford. And by the way, so he normally all, wouldn't have access to this guy. He's also founded Coursera, I think. And he also is co-founder of Coursera. So he's, yeah. he's a... That's true. You can call him a polymath and master of many. <laughs> 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 Jack of all trades, master of many. Yeah. So I know I said before the value of you know going to a, you know a physical university and having the chance to rush a fraternity and experience severe emotional trauma that will last with you for a lifetime, <laughs> but uh, you know this guy you get access to him virtually all his videos, um, just like that eighty bucks. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So he he advised uh, Ian Goodfellow, who was the guy that created Gans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> for me as well, like it's. It's also just getting back control on what you want to learn, how you want to learn it. Whereas like sitting in a lecture, there's there's stuff in there that like it's so inefficient for me, either because I already know know it or it's just not something that I'm interested, which means that my time, yeah, which is so precious, is like taken up. The big thing is, uh, I don't think we brought this up yet, it, it, the four-year degree implies once and done. Yeah. like You can't stop learning. Yeah. yeah. Or we, you know, you talk to a career true. veteran uh, who's maybe working in accounts payable for 38 years, just, you know, random number. Uh, <laughs> and maybe they get automated or parts of their job get automated and they have no preparation for a shift or making a wise pivot. Yeah. yeah. Then what? But they have 38 years of experience. That's true. You can't really compete with that. <laughs> but I, yeah. again, I, I think, you know, in the, I'll go back to analog to digital. There were great classes being taught in, say, the 1970s or 80s that if you happen to be sitting in that class or at that university, you could have enjoyed the benefits of that. The technologies that are existing today are recording those, putting all the materials online, packaging it up, and instead of being $50 an hour, which is expensive if you have a lot of hours and not accessible to everybody, is now becoming zero or damn close to it. I can go on to, I just logged into iTunes University and got my Harvard course. I only had one course there. But there's other courses there. You could take things like advanced pre-algebra from the St. James School. You can take game theory from from Yale University, general chemistry from Ohio State. And these are free, by the way. Uh, you can take from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute of I mean, Ecology studying elephants. <laughs> Wow, that's so uh, diverse. But these are things that people used to go to school from. There's one, 
uh, one from the United States Military Academy around the West Point history of the world. For, and they talk about World War II. Um, there's one here on machine learning from Stanford, and it's very similar to what you guys are taking, but this you can go get it on iTunes University. Uh, University of South Wales in computer science, basic computer programming with Raspberry Pi. Never even heard of that. Raspberry Pi is like a five dollar computer or ten dollar computer. They're very small single processor boards. Mm -hmm. You buy all the accoutrement that goes with it. Mm. So I bought one for my nephew. He loved it. He started playing around with it. Yeah. You can take an old monitor, an old keyboard, plug it all in and have a terminal that's connected to the internet and you don't need there's no hard disk drive and all your excess equipment and if you want a terminal in your house you can go do it. Oh sweet. So if you want to do things like browse uh in uh, the dark web, this is what you do it with. <laughs> you don't do it with a computer that you have spent money on. Uh, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of things out there. There's one from Bishop Gorman High School. It's uh, their high school chemistry class is online here. Wow. So um, I'm just giving you a few of these. This is the top ones in, in on iTunes. But there's so much out there. Uh, Digital is changing the way it's being done. Digital is changing what you need to know, and digital is changing when you should get it, which is not when you're 18 to 21, but forever. Mm -hmm. And it's cheap because the marginal costs of one more student for them is zero. Yeah. Yep. When we logged yes. into the machine learning course for Andrew Ung, uh, I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> His last name is NG, so it's rather hard. Um, I watched seven videos on how to pronounce it. I still don't know. But yeah, it's zero. I mean, like they didn't, they didn't incur any cost because we signed in. I think maybe the servers supporting Coursera went up by a fraction of a percent of for yeah. CPU power. That's about it. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. yeah. Would you yeah. look into your meal plan yet? I did not. I got extra meals, though, because I can get hungry when I'm yeah. learning machine learning. <laughs> learning machine learning. Yeah. <laughs> So I typed in one of the one of the areas that we studied in this past year around quantum mechanics. Yeah. So we wanted to understand at least at a high level how it was affecting quantum computing, and you go on there and there's dozens and dozens of courses on quantum mechanics. That, yeah. You know, I remember when I heard about it when I was in engineering school. I'm like, uh, I knew it was spelled with a Q. That was that was my extent of my knowledge of it. And it, I have a much better feel for it now, 30 years later, after using these tools and and, and understanding the Im implications of it in our in our compute platforms. So anyway, there's no excuse, right? Well, it's not an excuse, but it's really, it's a, I think, I mean, there's digital, no excuses for learning. Digital is disrupting yeah. the education markets in multiple dimensions, yeah. the way it gets delivered, what should get studied and when it should get studied. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? All three of those? Definitely. Some numbers for this course we're taking, by the way. This is one of the more popular ones. Uh, 2.5 million total students oh took the certification God. course. Uh, 110,000 reviews, 4.9 out of 5. And Huge. do you have the, uh, the location of the students? Uh, I doubt it. I can look, though. Well, the only reason I say that is because I would say it's heavily skewed outside the U.S. I would... Maybe agree. Yeah, so West Coast, maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, the only reason I say that is because, you know, one of the burdens of, not the burdens of the, the risks of affluence, is people aren't hustling. P think about if you are uh, in a developing country, I and mean, maybe you speak English, uh, but you live in a relatively uh, country with low, uh, you know, low incomes and low, low standard of living, this is now accessible to you. You learn this stuff, and all of a sudden, you're here. You're making lots of money. Yeah. Uh, and then it has subtitles in Chinese, English, uh, English, Hebrew, Spanish, Hindi, and Japanese. So you, you don't have to get well, a different professor or someone who has only only speak one with, language, but it's already there. With mm -hmm. Microsoft's platform, it's in every language. Right. As soon as they run it through that, that's just about ready to go. Using machine learning. Using machine learning to teach <laughs> machine learning in every language. Meta. <laughs> Right, and then was, as soon as we hook up to Musk's project, which is machine brain <laughs> interface, we won't even have to do that. Yeah, we'll just download it into our brains. Yeah, Johnny Mnemonic. Did you guys see that movie? No, that's with um, John, John Wick. Yeah, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Did he officially change his name now? It's in my mind. He's John Wick. Officially changed it for him. <laughs> yeah, you get, people just download his shit into their brains, and uh, same thing as the Matrix. That's that's going to be a separate show. Yeah, we'll do yeah, we have to do that. The machine brain interface. I do want to do one on that because I, 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 uh, 
I, I like that. We can study a little well, bit about well, that. I think I saw someone on TMZ talking about it, so I think that gives us license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is a this is an exciting topic. It's something I like to do whenever I whenever I talk about this and I hear guys like Bart and TJ taking a class. I like. I wish I had more time. And and this is our our sister show. Experience this. We recognize that if we have one limited quantity here, as digital explodes our access to entertainment, to education, the things to do, the things to read, the things to study, and gives us a wealth of abundance uh, of many things, what it's not giving us more of is time. Mm -hmm. And so we can start thinking about how we spend our time here. And I think you'll most people will be better off if they just add a few more spoonfuls of education into their lifestyle. They'll be better off professionally, personally, in their social relationships, and move away from what I'll call, you know, negative energy entertainment. You know that that you know, whether, whether that be the news or some of these inane reality shows that really offer nothing other than, you know, you know, keeping you awake for those hours. Mm -hmm. Yep. So agree. Great. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. See ya. Hey, thanks for listening to Pardon the Disruption. We'd like you to subscribe to our podcast if you like it. You can find us on most of the platforms where you get your podcast from, whether that be iTunes or YouTube or whatever you're on. Uh, we also want some feedback. Which shows do you want us to cover? What do you like? What do you not like? So that we can do this. We're doing this for you. We're not doing this for anything else. So please subscribe and give us some feedback. Thank you very much.